Hello everybody, it is The Last Raider. We are back with another video. And we're back to Ken and Karen in St. Louis. Because St. Louis's uh, political activist district attorney has decided to get involved in a case that reality, I don't think she's going to win no matter what she attempts. <laughs> let's let's go. Let's jump right into it here. St. Louis prosecutor considers charges against lawyer couple who brandished firearms at protesters outside their mansion after fearing for their lives. So, yeah, we've got uh, this chick over here. She's going to, you know, go after them apparently. And has decided that they need. She needs to go after him with the full extent. In her words, the full extent of the Missouri law. Um, basically, right here, <clears throat> the couple claimed they feared for their feared for our lives after protesters allegedly broke down the gate. Not allegedly, okay. We have pictures of this. The half the gate is broken in half. Okay, there is no allegedly Daily Mail. <clears throat> All right, they they have, the gate apparently was locked, and you they had to either get permission or physically break it, and they physically broke it. All right, the pair were the only ones to log lodge lodge. Damn, what is with these sites and being unable to use English properly? We're not we're the only ones able to log an official police report about the confrontation, citing threats of harm, and police said Monday they would not be charged. Yet. St. Louis Circuit Attorney Kimberly Gardner announced Monday that she was working with police and prosecutors to investigate the lawyers for possible threats against the crowd. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of problems with this. Okay, number one. Missouri has some pretty damn tough self-defense laws that are decidedly in favor of the homeowner, especially when you come to home invasions and stuff. Um, yeah, these two people were brandishing firearms at a crowd of people, but here's the thing. State has stand your ground, castle doctrine, lots of good things. I think I said this in another video that our private property laws actually extend to your motor vehicle. So if someone were to pretty much run up to your vehicle, bust the windows, they are pretty much breaking into your home. And, uh, you know, lethal force is then authorized. Missouri is one of them states that it's very easy to get shot if you act like a thug like you would in any other city. <laughs> and the thing is, a lot of people, I've heard some people who are gun owners, like, freaking out. Like, oh, she's going to go after him and all this. Um, yeah. Let her go after it. St. Louis is not like Chicago or New York. They're not allowed to make their own gun laws. Their gun policy is the same policy that it is. Like, like the gun laws in St. Louis are the same gun laws that are in my hometown, which is only of about just barely 1,200 people. Okay? Uh, the uh, <clears throat> St. Louis Mayor Kimberly has, I think Kimberly Clark has tried to multiple times pass a law that would increase gun control inside of the state, inside of the city, and decidedly every time Jefferson City comes in and says, you do this, we're coming after you. The Attorney General has come in and said, you do this, we're coming after you. Fix it. And they've turned around and fixed it. As far as, you know, these people brandishing weapons, I know there's a lot of people from different parts of this, from different areas of the state. Look, Missouri is different from the rest of y'all. It's a totally different country. In terms of you know like self defense weapons possession, um, to my knowledge, Missouri is the only state that allows you to own ballistic knives, and we do that because there's a there's a whole big story about how that happened. Basically, Democrats went in there and did a blanket ban on all spring assisted knife any 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 spring loaded knife that was a that whose blade was assisted by a spring, and. Um, Turns out they blanket banned ballistic knives back when the Dems had control. And then when the Republicans come back into control, people are like, you know, we like these spring-loaded knives, you know, that you can push a button and they'll they'll open up for you. We like to have those because if you're if you're trying to like if you're holding a box or something, you gotta cut something real quick, you can actually just 
pull the knife out, push the button, and then open it. And also, handicapped people wouldn't be handicapped with uh, folding knives. They'd be able to carry folding knives. And they're like, oh, yeah, sure, we'll do that. We'll, just, we'll give you that. And they, they killed the band. Well, when they did, turns out, ballistic knives were considered the same thing as switchblades. And that, that's what it was, a switchblade law. And... Um, technicality they're legal in the state of missouri now from what i understand with a knife like that you would technically have it would consider be considered like an aow like almost in any other weapon you would have to have it on your person where it could be seen uh most people probably wouldn't even know what the hell it was <laughs> when they saw it they's like oh a knife and the uh, bastard be in for a big surprise when he pulled it out <laughs> but uh back back to all of this okay um this this is not going to go where this woman thinks it's going to go. Okay? She thinks she's going to go in there, uh, intimidate the family. Probably, my my the the problem here is she's going. It's not a police officer she's going after. She's going after two. She's going after two people who are lawyers, who in their own minds realize they did nothing wrong. They were defending what was theirs. And state of Missouri, man, you can defend yourself and carry almost anything you want, like. Uh, to give you an example, I have my EDC, and my EDC right now has expanded to carrying an AR-15 to work. Originally, it was carrying an AR-15 with 140 round mag, and then I decided, then shit started getting worse, and I thought, eh, I'll probably take, you know, two 40 round mags, taped them together one day, and then I recently went out and bought a 100 round double drum beta mag. And I'm like, who cares? Uh, the whole purpose of that is if someone tries to, like I said, someone on Twitter, someone tries to steal the tools in the truck, my boss has done said we're fighting for the tools because if we lose a lot of our power tools and stuff like that, we cannot do our jobs as efficiently and thus we will not be able to work. So we have to fight for the tools now. <laughs> if if a bunch of looters come up and try to loot the truck, the truck is going to turn into a mobile fortress very quickly. Um, uh, my boss has a brush guard on the front of it, or, or as he likes to call it, the protest buster. Uh, <laughs> just hit. He's like he's like four wheel drive, and we're going forward. <laughs> okay, we're we're just not stopping. Uh, you if if they try, it's like so. What happens if they bust the window? He said you you shoot at whoever busted the window. And try not to hit anyone else. So, uh, the whole purpose of that is just to get out of that situation if it gets violent. Because right now, uh, I think it was Utah, they had a guy run up to a window, bust it open, and shoot a chick while she was driving. Uh, a, a woman just driving down the street, and she tried to avoid the protest and turn, and they jumped on the front of her vehicle. One dude, an agitator, walked up there, a terrorist, goes up there, shoots inside the vehicle, pops like two rounds at her hit her and she went to the hospital. Uh, I get shot. I'm going to be fucking pissed. I mean, <laughs> but anyway, this nonsense here of, like I said, going after these people, you would have to prove a lot of things. You have to prove that they intended on intimidating these protesters, which you have them breaking down a gate. Uh, that is a barrier to prevent them from getting out. And once you cross a barrier, you, you are pretty much trespassing on all fronts. Now, one thing that will probably save these people is they did not go past their property line uh, if they didn't do that. Because, like I said, there's only two laws that protect a criminal. And that is, one, um, you do not you have the right to stand your ground, but you do not have the right to pursue. If you, basically what that means is, if you have someone, like, walks up into my yard and starts threatening me with a ball bat and I pull my gun out and they run off the property line, I am not allowed to go after them. I'm allowed to call the police, give them a description, say the bastard's in the area, and if the police deputize me temporarily to go do it. Uh, it happened one time to my dad. They had a guy come in from St. Louis who uh, had gotten into a fight with someone out there. and was, You know, he was wanted. Uh, got into a fight with some redneck who pulled out a lead pipe and bashed his skull pretty good. Uh and so the de the police department comes up there and they said, uh, we need you to help us do this. They didn't do like the whole hand swearing. They just said, look, uh, you help us look for the guy. If you find him, come get us. 
And then my dad was helping him comb the neighborhood for this idiot. And he eventually found him. He walks up by a bush and this idiot got, my dad's like, didn't even know the bastard was there. And he goes, don't you tell him where I'm at. Dad goes, yeah, okay. I, I, I won't. I'll tell him you went the other way. Turned around, ran back to the police, goes back to the police. He's like, yeah, he's over in that bush back there. <laughs> Like told him I'm like, hey, this dude's a violent felon. We're not gonna play games with this idiot tonight. So they up and arrested him, sent him back to St. Louis after a long story short. Um actually uh long story medium, they went to a foot chase and the bastard ran into a uh a lawn table. He was out of his head. He he's doing good. My dad's like, Yeah, he's doing good till he hit that damn table. And that was over. <laughs> he hit the table and then the two big old fat cops just landed right on top of him and just smashed him into the ground. So I mean it was it was it was pretty funny. But as I said, they didn't pursue anyone. They simply went to their property line and prevented them from stepping foot onto their personal property. Now you also have the possibility here of they're going to pull in, uh, probably call witnesses from the property or the, uh, was it the gated community over there? And they'll talk to them about it. Another thing that's going to also probably play against this is this is St. Louis County, St. Louis County who has had, who has seen looters before they've seen BLM. They, they, in, they know intimately after the Michael Brown riots and then, um, recently with the George Floyd riots. And I'm not calling them protests, they're riots. So, my question is this, when you get jury duty, <laughs> where is this chick going to get uh, the jurors? Because she pulls them out of Ferguson. That They're going to be like business owners and homeowners who have been pushed around by these protesters. They're like, no, fuck it. These people, this is what we should be able to do. In fact, because these two people were getting some fucking guns too. Uh, innocent. Uh, despite having to prove everything, you're going to have to get the very same people you've allowed to be abused to come in here and go after these two people in the hope that you're going to get a guilty plea. I've said this before, you know, you don't, in a, in a courtroom, the one rule you've got to remember is you don't have to actually be right by the law. You just have to convince 12 people you were in the right. And if you do that nine times out of 10, you're going to walk because if they give you an innocent, they say, oh, you know, we find them, you know, not guilty. Well, you walk, son. You like, ha ha. You're strutting outside and doing the dance like Peter Parker did in Spider Man. Uh, what was it? Spider Man three? They did that. Yeah, it had to be Spider Man three because he had the symbiote suit in Spider Man three. But uh, as far as brandishing the firearm around, they can just say, you know, we were nervous and apologize for you know being stupid. Say, oh, I almost, almost killed a family member of mine by. All this with all the nonsense, but we were scared out of our minds, which is which is true. And then another thing that's also going to come into play is the police say that uh, later in this article, they're like, yeah, they got, um, they did receive verbal threats. Uh, he said they told him they were going to burn his house down and kill his dog. I guess they might have had a shit zoo outside. People get stupid when they say they're going to kill someone. It's like, like you've ever attempted to kill someone in your life. If you're sitting there, real killers, I'll tell you, the thing about real killers is they don't tell you they're going to kill you. They understand, people have actually killed individuals. You're talked to like actual murderers, <clears throat> guys that have done done shit. They tell you, you don't say nothing. You, even gangbangers, they'll tell you. I remember one guy who was a gangbanger, he went to prison and come back. He said, you're going to kill somebody. He said, you don't ever talk about it. He said, that's how you know somebody's never killed someone. When they walk up and they're like, oh, we'll kill you. Nah, he said, they're, they're trying to intimidate you. He said, real killers. He said, move up on you with a 12 gauge. Get close. Boom, boom. Two blasts and you're done. He said, if they're good. He said, real killers don't tell you they're coming up on you. Uh, there's a video on Twitter right now uh, that expl that is exactly like that. It's a dude uh, in a gang violent shooting. And he's sitting there talking, talking, talking. He turns away for just a second, pulls a pistol out whips back to the vehicle and opens up. You can tell he never warns the guy about nothing. It's, it's coming in, hits you hard and fast. Cause it takes, like I said, it takes a bit to kill somebody. Humans are, are pretty, if you ever study like gladiators, gladiators, one of the things that you learn about gladiators is they understood that it's very difficult to kill a human being, especially with a sword. It's not like in the movies where they're like, Oh, you know, I stab you one time you're done, or I shoot you one time you're done. Um, my aunt actually had a guy break into her home and she shot him like four times, two in the chest, one in the face and one in the back. 
And she walked on the back charge because he had actually jumped her after taking three bullets and tried to drag her to the ground. So, I mean, a human body can take some abuse from a firearm. A firearm's basic purpose is not actually to kill you. Its basic purpose is for you to reach out with uh, high trauma force, basically, and touch something at a distance, which does give it a tactical advantage over things like swords and spears and things like that, because you have a greater range. Um, most of the time, most of your weapons, unless you are getting a really good shot, and even deer hunting, you have to place your bullet very carefully, like in the heart, neck, or head area, to get that perfect kill. And when I say perfect kill, I mean you hit the deer and it just falls over. A lot of times, if you see people in warfare get hit, they don't always like get hit and go down. Sometimes they get hit and they'll be on the ground screaming like a bitch. Or dudes will get hit and they'll get right back up. Osama bin Laden was a guy that was like that. You know, you hit him like, I think in one battle, he got shot six times by Russian snipers. And he got, they patch him up, he get right back in the fight. Dude was tough. I mean... It, it's hilarious when movie companies come out there and they make these people look absolutely sad. <clears throat> and it's like, no, these, these fuckers are tough. They're they're formidable opponents to the United States. So Simon Bin Laden was a guy that if you, any other normal person were probably going to go up against him, he would have a pretty good chance of beating your ass. Probably a pretty good chance of beating your ass and giving you a little anal rape in the process. But anyway... As I said, I mean, just the, the only thing really would be like branching a firearm, but then you take into consideration how many people were actually what what they were facing down. You know, you got a bunch of angry protesters, and as lawyers, what they'll probably do is they'll bring out a whole bunch of BLM riots where they're burning shit down and beating people half to death. Bring that dude out in Texas who came who was defending his store, and the protesters beat him to death, where he's like laying in a clump in the ground. <laughs> And then, then the, uh, the like, and then it's like the jury is going to side with you on that one, unless you can somehow stack the jury. That's going to be another thing. But like I said, you know, this is just more bull crap. And the only thing it's going to do right now is just red pill the local populace. Because, like I said, the reason Donald Trump is not getting involved right now is because there's really no reason to. It's the same reason why the militia is going out protecting small towns. They're not going out protecting big cities because big cities have voted for this crap. Uh, the militia, right, right-leaning groups, all of them, they don't have to go out there and do much. They just have to sit back and let them torment the city. All right? And another thing also that, that kind of makes it funny, and I'll leave everyone with this. It's hilarious when you consider this woman here supports BLM and the defunding of police, yet somehow she's going to enforce the rule of law. Okay? There's a point in time where if you're trying to prosecute these people, if you get rid of the St. Louis PD, who the fuck's going to serve them? Okay? Oh, uh, we expect you in a court date. I'd be like, uh, you defunded the police, remember? Yeah. Uh, so, no, I don't think I will. Be like old man uh, Captain America. No, I don't think I will. <laughs> Show up to court. No, I don't think I will. <laughs> Pay your taxes. No, I don't think I will. Um, you, you don't have any police. You don't have any enforcement. And that's what law enforcement is. They're there to enforce it. You can make law enforcement better with better training and, and more money, you know, more capital and more um, law enforcement officers. But you get rid of law enforcement officers, it's like, who's going to show up to this guy's house and, and serve him? This bitch? I don't think so, because she's going to come up there and uh, Urban Commando is going to come out with his AR-15 and run her off, probably. <laughs> I mean, that that's what's, that's what it's coming down to. I mean, look at Chaz. Chaz right now is ruled by who's got the most guns. It's just that one rapper guy. But anyway, folks, tell me what you think about all this, you know, um, how stupid do you think this is that people who are protecting their property are, are being assaulted by their own government? And uh, does it does it make you lose faith in your own government? I'm telling you right now, local law enforcement uh, have got it going on. We haven't had any trouble out of my police department, most of the police departments in this area that I'm at, uh, over here in the boot hill. We don't have a lot of problems, our police. They're just like, look, common sense will leave you alone. Uh, these city cops, man, I don't know what to think. At, at some point in time, you would think that the RoboCop speech from uh, RoboCop 2 would come in there. It's like, are we cops? 
Do we not enforce the law and protect the people? Well, fuck the mayor. Let's go enforce the law and protect the people. Um, but no, they're not doing that. It, it's almost as if uh, they're more worried about their job than they are worried about doing their job. But uh, anyway, folks, just that's all I got to say about it. As I said before, leave a like. Subscribe and comment in the comments. Also, if you're new to the channel, be sure to hit the bell for notification because I put out videos as often as I can. And as always, stay safe, stay frosty, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye now.